Sure. I'm Roger Chow. Uh, I'm a physician at Oregon Health and Science University. I'm an associate professor of medicine. Uh, my specialty is internal medicine. Uh, I'm the scientific director at the Oregon Evidence-Based Practice Center, uh, which is uh, sponsored by AHRQ. Um, we also have the contract to uh, conduct evidence reviews for the U.S. Preventive Services Task Force, and I'm the lead investigator um, at uh, OHSU on that uh, project. Yeah, so AHRQ is the Agency for Healthcare Research and Quality. It is an agency of the Department of Health and Human Services, um, so it is a federal agency, um, and it's charged with improving the health of all Americans. Um, uh, what AHRQ does is that it uh, helps support the task force. So the U.S. Preventive Services Task Force is an independent um, uh, body. Um, it is not a federal uh, body, um, but it receives support from uh, the agency uh, to do its work, which is to uh, help develop evidence-based screening guidelines, um, uh, you know, to, again, to help uh, improve the health of all Americans. Um, so, in general, what AHRQ does is that it, it contracts this work to the evidence-based practice centers. Um, and so there's about 15 or 16 evidence-based practice centers in the United States and Canada. Um, and we are basically, um, we, we, we achieve status as an evidence-based practice center uh, by having expertise in doing these kinds of reviews. So AHRQ doesn't do them themselves, but they do um, commission them. Um, like I said, from the uh, evidence-based practice centers, we're one of them uh, here at Oregon. Um, and uh, to, to answer the second part of the question, um, there are times when we will use a pre-existing systematic review or meta-analysis um, because uh, these things are very time-consuming um, and uh, resource-intensive to, to conduct. And so if somebody has done a good job with a meta-analysis before, and we're asked to answer a question where that meta-analysis, you know, is a piece of that, uh, there are times where we will use a high-quality meta-analysis. Just to back up a little bit, a meta-analysis is a type of um, uh, it, it's a type of you know, systematic review which is quantitative. So we do both qualitative and quantitative systematic reviews. Um, AMSTAR has actually become uh, kind of outdated. Something has replaced it. Uh, well, well, I mean, AMSTAR is a, uh, you know, it's a systematic review quality assessment tool, um, I should say. Um, so it, it's, it's how we assess whether somebody's done a systematic review well. Um, um, but the principles in AMSTAR are ones that we do follow. I think that there's a, uh, you know, this is an evolving and relatively new field, uh, so the methods have been changing and evolving over the last, you know, 10 or 20 years. Um, but many of the principles in AMSTAR are ones that we try to follow when we conduct our reviews, and that includes uh, trying to be comprehensive, uh, trying to do things to eliminate bias when we uh, look for um, and decide which studies to include. Uh, so those are things like using explicit inclusion and in inclusion and exclusion criteria, uh, things like uh, dual data abstraction to try to reduce errors in how we uh, abstract the data. Uh, we pay attention to the quality of the studies, uh, which uh, isn't just the study type, but also you know, how well the studies were conducted um, and reported. Um, if we do combine the studies uh, with meta-analysis, we try to make sure that we use appropriate statistical techniques, and if there's issues with there, um, you know, uh, they need to be addressed uh, in the uh, study. We also try to look for publication bias and effects of industry funding and stuff like that. The, the, the people that have worked with the EPCs are the same people that develop AMSTAR and work in Cochrane and do all these other things. They're the exact same people. They're people like David Atkins and David Mower and folks like that who have all been working on the same kinds of things. The people in the EPCs are the experts in these fields.
So the, the, the domains that are looked at when we assess quality, um, you know, again, there's, there's come to be a consensus, and, and many of those uh, domains are included in the Cochrane types of instruments, um, and many of the evidence-based practice centers have adopted um, those kinds of instruments, uh, like the Cochrane groups have developed. Uh, but even among the Cochrane groups, there's uh, variation. So, for example, the Cochrane Back Review Group uses a slightly different quality assessment instrument than, you know, say, the cancer group um, or whatever. Um, and uh, I would say that, and, and there are some older instruments that are very widely used too, like the Haddad scale um, is a relatively simple instrument. Um, uh, it's a, basically a three-question instrument that quite a few people still use, um, and it has some empiric support behind it. Um, I would say that it's not necessarily critical which instrument you use. Um, it's more important that you're looking at the important aspects of quality and doing a thoughtful job of assessing them and how they affect, you know, the results of your meta-analysis or systematic review. HRQ and many other groups have adapted um, methods um, that are similar to methods uh, developed by a group called GRADE, uh, that's G-R-A-D-E, that's an acronym uh, for an international group that's kind of come together for um, how, and, and have tried to develop st uh, standardized ways of looking at um, how to assess a body of evidence. And the way that GRADE works is that, um, you know, you look at the type of studies, uh, so if you have randomized controlled trials, those, you know, start off as, you know, you assume that they're higher quality, and then you look at factors that can affect your assessment. And those kinds of factors are if you have problems with uh, the quality of those randomized controlled trials. So just being a randomized controlled trial doesn't necessarily mean that it was conducted and reported well. So if there's problems there with many of the studies, that can downgrade a body of evidence. Um, if there is uh, inconsistency that you can't explain, so if some of the randomized controlled trials give one result and others give another result and they're really looking at the same question in the same populations, um, that's a problem and that uh, decreases your certainty um, in the findings. If there aren't a lot of studies or the studies are really small, that can also uh, decrease your confidence. Um, and then if you have, uh, you know, really imprecise estimates or if you have only indirect evidence, um, that can also um, uh, decrease your confidence. On the other end of the spectrum, if you're looking at observational studies uh, like case control studies or cohort studies, uh, the way GRADE works is that you start off assuming that those are lower qualities because um, they are uh, susceptible to a lot of bias and confounding. Um, and the way that uh, GRADE works is that you look at factors that can kind of bump you up. Um, and so uh, when you look at the observational studies, if, you know, if you're, if you're seeing things like a dose effect, if the quality is really good, um, if all of the plausible confounders would actually uh, uh, strengthen uh, what, the, you know, what your uh, finding is, if you have very strong effect sizes, all of those things can kind of bump up observational studies. Um, and so, you know, I think this old way of thinking about the evidence hierarchy as, you know, randomized controlled trials are always the best, um, we're starting to become a little more nuanced about how we look at this stuff. And that randomized controlled trials, yes, we like them because, you know, they have advantages. Um, but if you have poorly done randomized controlled trials, you know, there are situations where the observational studies could, you know, theoretically be just as good as the RCTs or be just as informative. There's the methods manual that's already out there. Um, there's standards, uh, but there's also a lot of variation. I mean, you could go ask the Cochrane people the same thing. And even though they have the Cochrane handbook, um, a lot of those reviews are done quite differently. And if you go, uh, it's, it's, there's, it's, uh, it's, it's not dissimilar to doing any other kind of scientific research where there is, you know, some leeway in kind of how you apply uh, the rules. And if